Every time I go to the store, I see these stand-up video game cabinets, and I think about how much I always wanted one growing up. I almost buy one, but then I think twice about it, and I say, this only plays one game. What if I could have every game? This is my tabletop arcade system. It's built with a Raspberry Pi 4, a 4x3 screen, some 3D printing and LEDs, a few arcade switches and controller. It was a lot cheaper than the store-bought units, and it has every game you can imagine. Today, I'll show you how I built it. We'll need a main board for the game. I'm going to use a Raspberry Pi 4. We'll need an arcade controller. This USB controller was about $9 on Amazon. We'll need sound. I got two of these speakers. We'll need a joystick. That's also from Amazon. Arcade buttons. Available in boxes of six, I believe, on Amazon. An audio amplifier. This was $29 at my local electronic store. But there's other ways to do it. You could use a, one for a car. You can use a hobby amplifier that you can build yourself. Anything that takes a line level input and brings it up to speaker. Having bass and treble is an added attraction. Definitely going to help out. A lot of builds that I've watched, they always go heavily into the woodworking and then just kind of skip the electronics at the end. I'm not a woodworker, so I haven't done a very good job at all. This is about the best you're going to get out of me. Horrible corners and edges. Not really up to par sanding. A little bit of dust in the paint. It's going to do a good job for our purposes. I spent about two days total building this. Uh, I used a circular saw for the straight pieces, finishing off with a um, coping saw. For the rounded cuts, I used a jigsaw. They're pretty rough, but you'll never see them. This is our control surface. There are holes for the six switches and the joystick. The best way to cut these holes is with an 1 and 1 8 inch Forstner bit. This doesn't leave much of a mark on the underside. A little bit of roughness, but not bad. For the keys, we're going to use two different colors. We've got some green and some blue. If we align these all, it'll make the wire management a little bit easier. There we are. Once they're all tight, <clears throat> we can start putting the switches in. 
And these switches go like so. Next, this is the joystick. The way I've got the wiring, this is up. This monitor has got a 120 volt input and a VGA connector. We're going to have to convert that to HDMI. Find the center. There. These screws are just a little too long, and I don't want them poking through the front. All the controls are mounted. We just need to put in the electronics to run them. The joystick adapter didn't come with it, but I have this standoff kit which is going to be perfect for mounting it in the project. I'm not sure where I got this standoff kit. It may be for the joystick module in the pinball machine. Two standoffs should be enough. I might be able to use these other two standoffs for the Raspberry Pi. Let's double check that those didn't come through the front. Good. Now, as for the buttons, this is button 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We're going to use 7 and 8 for a different spot on the machine. We won't need these, and then after that, all we need is up, down, well, up, down, left, right. These are 5 volt supplies if you need them. In my case, we don't. These are impossible to maneuver. I've already made a mistake. But I spotted it before it was too late. <clears throat> These switches are only normally open. This one, which came with a different kit, is normally closed and normally open. Meaning that if this switch right now is connected, the blue to the white, if I move the blue to this pin, it's not connected until you push the button. As far as the joystick goes, it's not as easy. There's no color code for these wires in the packaging that I bought it with, but I figured it out a little bit. The, gr the ground, or common in this case, is black. Red is going to be up. I believe orange is down. Green is going to be left. Yellow should be right. Okay. 
we're going to do something a little different for the joystick. It's supposed to plug in here. We don't have the outlet with a four pin connector to plug it in there. The alternative would be these four connections here. But each one doesn't need a ground. So we're going to cut the grounds off for the sake of simplicity. Of three of them, not all four. And just one will have a ground. We'll make that up. This is up, down, left, right. That's just a little too much wire. Up is red. That would be this one. Down is orange. I believe that yellow is right. But I don't remember. Let's find out. Yellow is right. And green is left. If that was not the case, we can still switch the plugs. I usually go about once around, and then I add another wire into the same bundle. Sometimes twice around. The tape is cheap. The controller wiring is almost complete. We've got two more switches that haven't come in yet. We'll add those later, but we'll do the wiring for them now. And we'll use these micro switches to simulate them. There. <clears throat> later, these two will be on the front panel and they will look like uh, coin doors. 25 cents to play for both. But what they really are is they're just pressable buttons and they say select and start. They're pretty important to the program. I wanted to use a 4x3 monitor. I found this one at Goodwill. It was, I think, about $25 to $30. Um, I've already taken it out of its case. We won't need any of that. This was the front button panel 
we won't need that either. This monitor has got a 120 volt input and a VGA connector. We're going to have to convert that to HDMI. Next, we're going to add the monitor, which goes roughly like so. Then we have to line up the holes. That may take a minute or two. Hmm, we're going to need some washers. These are great for measuring mistakes. That is not a screwdriver. That's better. These screws are also a little bit long. So we're going to use two washers per screw. These are actually bolts. There we are. Now we've got the monitor attached. Next we should do the speakers. And these fit snugly right here, even without screws. So they'll stay put while I reach for screws. <laughs> I've already pre-drilled these holes. For the software, we will need a program like Etcher. Etcher is for writing bootable volumes onto SD cards. Once the SD card is in the drive, we will select the image, which is RetroPie Buster 4.6-RPI4. This is the image for the Raspberry Pi 4 that we'll be using. There's a different image for the Raspberry Pi 3. Then we select the target. The target is going to be generic USB 3.0, in my case is the 15 gig drive. We'll select that and press continue. Then press flash. It'll take a few minutes to write the files. Once it's finished writing, it will validate the file system.
Once it's finished, you'll get a notification up here, one successful device, and the writing speed that it was done. It will also give you the option to make another one just like it. In this case, we won't need to do that. Just close the program, take out the SD card, and put it into the Raspberry Pi. Now that we have the Raspberry Pi mounted on the brackets, we can install it. I'll put it right about here. Maybe it'll be out of the way of other things. And we'll be able to access it if we need to pull the card out and uh, do a reprogram. So for this job we're going to need a few adapters. The first of which is micro HDMI to a full size. The second adapter we need, HDMI to VGA, and this is actually a converter rather than an adapter. And now we have our VGA source for the monitor. Now that's not going anywhere. We're going to fasten the control panel temporarily so that it can be removed. I've got some magnets and plates that should hold it in position. Okay, that should hold it. Maybe we'll put one more in the front. Okay, the magnet latches are all in. That's beautiful. Not coming free anytime now. Well, if you really pull on it. I think I'm going to make a change in the design. Originally I had this USB cable tethered right here, but I've thought about it a little more, and it's probably best to leave it loose down there so that the control panel can be removed completely. So I think we will bundle the USB cable here, attach it to the Raspberry Pi, and it will be part of the cabinet rather than part of the control board. That should be a lot neater. We've got the extra cable that kind of bundles up down here. Now we have to do the audio and power. As far as power goes, the monitor is going to need 110 volts. 
The Raspberry Pi is going to need 5 volts and the sound system is going to need 12 volts. I think we'll mount the sound system here. Then we'll have plenty of room down here for whatever power supplies we want to use. I think that we'll also have a 5 or 12 volt lighting system for the marquee at the top. This will light up from the back and will probably change color. Let's wire the speakers. The smaller post is going to be negative, the larger is positive. The speaker wires are going to go to the amplifier. Let's see, if we are in the front, that's right, this is left. So we'll do right. Now we need a connector to run the audio from the Pi to the audio amp. We have a Stereo connector. And the power adapter for the amp. Hmm. Not magnetic any longer. There's a trick to that. <clears throat> if your screwdriver bit is no longer magnetic, or if it never was, you take a magnet. This is my camera remote, and I keep it stuck to the front of the bench. Well, this one may not work. It's not very strong. Fortunately, I have one, and I've had one this entire time. Now it's time to build the power supplies to run this entire thing. We're going to need a 5 volt for the Raspberry Pi, a 12 volt for the sound system and a 110 volt outlet for the monitor. Several of those are pretty simple. The hardest one is the Raspberry Pi. It takes about 3 amps, which is really hard to get with a USB. But this is a dedicated Raspberry Pi power supply. For the 12 volt, I've got one of these bricks. I have a lot of these laying around because, uh, well, I got them cheap and they are good for everything. A lot of times you have to cut the plugs off because the plugs aren't good for anything because they don't fit anything. The 12 volt, we can probably mount somewhere around here maybe on the floor. That's not a bad idea. This supply should be about twice as much as this amplifier needs. 
and these are very clean they don't make any noise a lot of times if you get a cheap power supply you'll get a lot of buzzing or humming out of an audio amplifier they need a lot of filters let's see normal rule says the white stripe is power and the solid is ground in automotive the red is power and the black is usually ground being that it's 12 volts it probably follows automotive rules Those are extra long. Let's cut those down a bit. Twelve volts is done. We'll sink it under those two. And the five volt is already done. that side. We'll put this one on this side. This unit has a floating ground. It's not supposed to, but it does now. There we are. That was pretty hard to find without looking. Let's make sure it doesn't come unplugged again. That could be a pain in the neck if it does. Well, isn't that about the worst? It'll stay. Right now, we're running this machine on three wires. This is the 12 volt, the monitor, and the 5 volt for the Pi. I'm thinking we should mount this extension cord inside the cabinet so we only have one cord. That should do it. Now let's tie up this rat's nest. That is a lot better. I think we're pretty much done with the electrical. On the bottom of the game, we're already seeing paint wearing off. So we should probably put some feet on so that it doesn't ruin surfaces and it doesn't ruin the machine. 
You're never going to see this part, but what if it chips the sides? Let's put them hmm, right around the edges, maybe. I bought these labels for the sides. I got these on redbubble.com. Let's see. We will go 10 from the bottom. It's been about a week since I started this. But we got a shipment today, which is the last thing that we need for this build. These are going to be our select and start buttons. They look like coin acceptors, when in reality they're just arcade switches because this is going to be a free play unit. We're not going to collect quarters with it. I'm thinking that I would like them about this far apart on the front panel. There is a magnet latch here, which the screws were a little long and they kind of poke out. Maybe we can cover up that mistake with the buttons and we'll put them closer together. What I should do is measure one and duplicate that measurement on the other side then we'll know exactly where they're going. I also made this on the 3D printer. It was supposed to be a lot thicker but I ran out of filament because it's been humid and the filament broke. This one layer print is actually the perfect template. So we'll assume that it goes right there. The overlay for the game board is going to come down and we don't want we don't want these switches to be unseen so we'll probably go a little lower than center for those. I'm going to assume right about there. Which really is centered. So we'll go about one and a sixteenth down. This one. I believe is here. Where is it? Is that it? Six and a quarter. By one and a sixteenth from the top. I bought a one inch bit for this. Let's see if this is the one inch bit. It is. Well, let's measure twice and cut once, right? This one looks a little bit lower. Hopefully we won't notice. It's 
it's not bad. The other thing about these is they have these little lineup pins at the top and the bottom so that they don't get twisted. This is where I'm going to run into some trouble because I know that I'm not going to drill them straight. doesn't look straight, so I'm not sure. Hmm. I don't believe the top one is straight. That's way over. Ah, that could be a problem. The magnet is right there. The bracket lines up right here. Looks good for my house. I've got a little bit of wiggle room to get them right. Let's tighten them up and see how the lights and the switches look. This is the part where we look for the hardware. Where did it get off to? Next is the part where we vacuum up all this sawdust. There's one. It looks like it's going to be easier to put the switches in before turning these. I hadn't counted on that. There's one. They don't make it easy. Oh, yes they do. You just have to be at the right angle. Doesn't help building this on a monitor, by the way. I'm looking at the monitor over there so that I can see straight down. That is not bad spacing. I made a little chip here. I'm going to have to redo this paint job. No reason for you to have to sit through that. Though I won't be able to show you where to get the ROMs for this machine, if you got creative and looked on the internet, you may be able to find them. But I can't endorse any specific place that would have them.
Hey, Crank, bring that statue back, you bloated beanbag! <laughs> <laughs> 